where will you go first? Wherever you may go, Lexus will welcome you back with exceptional offers. Find out all the ways a Lexus can be yours at Lexus.com. Lease the 2020 ES350 for $379 a month for 36 months with $39.99 due at signing. Experience amazing at your New York, New Jersey, Connecticut Lexus dealer. Call 1-800-USA-LEXUS for important lease offer and pricing details. Not all customers will qualify. Offer valid in the Lexus Eastern area only and it's June 30th, 2020. Welcome to the Oh Hell No podcast, where I, Keisha Nicole, delivers a daily dose of passion, purpose, and struggle by interviewing people who are living their best life doing what they love. Here on this podcast, every Oh Hell No moment serves a purpose. Now let's get started with the show. All right. Welcome to another episode of the Oh Hell No podcast. Today we have Noelle Kay. She is an R&B singer from the Boogie Down Bronx. Welcome to the show, Noelle. Hey, hey. (laughs) Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. This means so much. So how are you doing with this COVID-19 stuff? Well, I've actually been working during the whole pandemic. Um, I'm an essential worker. So, yeah, it's been super interesting, like... um, doing various work actually being an essential worker and being out here during it and also just having limitations on my creativity but it's been very interesting I've also lost people lost you know friends loved ones have lost people so it's been a crazy time Wow. how have you been holding up well first of all I'm sorry to hear that um sorry for your loss um thank you I appreciate that I'm surviving, girl. I've been working, too. I work from home during the day with my nine to five and, you know, just quarantining with my family. Um, I have family members that are a little scattered, but they've been fine. I did lose a, you know, family member. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Thank you. But, you know, we're just chucking along. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. It, it's been eye-opening just to see how this is all playing out spiritually, emotionally, mentally for me and physically, too. So just been trying to make sure that I'm staying, you know, creative in what I love to do and just making sure, like, I'm taking the notes and jotting stuff down. And I found a website that offers classes. They also have classes, like, for free, and um, they also class. Um, offer classes for like low prices um, for you to just keep going and learning and like absorbing some of the the knacks to what you know you're trying to do in your business so I've been trying to just do a little bit of everything to keep my mind stimulated to keep me focused you know depression has really been a huge thing for a lot of people a lot of people in their homes who now have to resort to being alone or not getting up to being able to do the everyday things they do to keep themselves going as time goes on so just trying to keep the mind stimulated and focused on something and looking forward to a a future in everything you kind of plan out right definitely changed my plans definitely changed I know (laughs) girl everybody was coming into 2020 (laughs) with big plans and COVID was like (laughs) and then it was like oh hell no what's going on (laughs) right now exactly the biggest oh hell no moment Mm -hmm. of the year (laughs) The biggest. Mm. So you have been performing since the age of seven. And I wanted to ask you, do you think this has always been your passion or was it something that your parents saw in you and nurtured and you grew to love it? What do you what is your opinion on that? Well, I've never had somebody ask me that specifically, like on both ends of the spectrum. I feel like I have a little bit of both in it. I feel like I actually like to do it. And I think my parents caught on to that and then said, let's nurture this and see where it goes. And, you know, I was the only child and it wasn't that my parents didn't try to have other um, children. It's just my mom. And unfortunately she couldn't carry the next child that she tried to have. So, you know, with that and not having another sibling in the house to just kind of grow with and do things with together and just, it helps occupy the time and like, other areas you learn things faster. My parents had to just put me in those spaces, being that I was the only child and have a sibling to kind of learn those communication skills and 
get that kind of experience. So I was in dance classes and drama classes and music classes. And it just nurtured that, you know, wanting to sing and wanting to entertain and just kind of connect with an audience, a bigger audience, because believe it or not, which is crazy because most people don't believe it when I say it. It's like, I can be very timid at times, like very to myself and like, no, no spotlight. Like, could you imagine a person that's saying, yo, put the spotlight on me. This is what I do. I love to do it. It has meaning to it. Tune into it. Tap into it. We can vibe together. I really don't like the spotlight on me sometimes. It's kind of like I do like my privacy. I do like my alone time, my, my time to myself. And on the other hand of that, I'll get like super shy when it's like my friends and family in a room and they're like, sing. And I'm like, no, (laughs) (laughs) stop. (laughs) Because, you know, sharing that you get their judgment or their view of it. And they're like your biggest critics. Those are the people that mean their opinion and their suggestions mean the most. So you always want to make the best impression with them. And and that's what just kind of gets to me. So I'm never nervous before I get on stage. It's more so after to know, like, who who am I going to speak to to tell me, like, what they thought about my performance and what are they going to think? And did I successfully achieve the goal of connecting with them in in the way that I intended to? So those are just pressures I put on myself um, that comes along with that. But. Yeah, believe it or not, I'm very, like, you know, timid at times. I'm like, no, I don't want to share this until it's completely done. I I believe it. Yeah, Yeah, I totally Mm -hmm. believe it. Because, you know, sometimes people can turn on for, you know, what they're supposed to do. And then once they're done doing that thing, it's like they're an introvert. Right. So yeah. I totally get it. So yes. what, what would you say is the hardest part of pursuing an R&B singing career in 2020? Marketing. Mm. A marketing is probably the hardest thing about the entire thing at all. Uh, from day one, I think just looking at the industry in general and just how we've seen certain artists come in and out and we have questions of like you know why didn't this person pop like this or we like I know my neighborhood friend who sounds better or they they've been trying so hard and then we see somebody who just happened to it seems like it just happened overnight for them so I think marketing is really is the key to just connecting that final piece to what your, you know, the canvas that you have now created. I'm still trying. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm telling you, I'm not perfect. Like, I'm still figuring out ways to market myself without feeling like I'm, like, just a piece of a product or a product at all. But you just have to know that, you know, you are in some aspects. So that's the hardest part, (laughs) I think. So what do you enjoy the most about pursuing a career um, in singing Um, and being at the stage that you are? Because, you know, you're probably still, you know, getting your sound out there, you know. Right. So you're at this stage. What do you enjoy the most about being at this stage in your career? And and to piggyback off of... um, getting sound out there, even getting sound, period. Just figuring out what tunes really flow for you on a track. Like, I'm coming from being a stage performer consistently. Like, that's the only thing I've ever done going to now, mixing it with making records on a track. So that has been a huge transition for me from day one. And that would be for anybody who started singing live before they made, you know, music when they got to an age where they, you know, they could start making tracks or something like that, unless they were a child star, you know, or a child rapper like Lil Bow Wow and stuff. He was making records before I was ever making a song. So um, I think it really has to do with, um, I would say my favorite part of it is the fact that you as time goes on and like you're getting like beats and new sounds and you're you're growing in like what you love to do it's like what you come up with I know like I had a conversation with I'm, I also am a co-host on a podcast and I was having a conversation with my host the other day and she was listening to new music of mine she was like I'm just so excited for people to hear your new music because it's just like it feels just like such a step up from like 
what you've already done and I love what you've already done. So this is awesome. So it just feels like when you have like new tools and new resources, like you meet new producers, you, you meet new people that just have an ear for what you want and like beats and like collaborating and stuff. It helps with the creativity to like grow. So I sound different now too. And that's pretty special. So what made you choose to do records and pursue this type of stuff as opposed to stage, <laughs> like doing Broadway or that avenue? I actually went to LaGuardia Arts, the fame school, <laughs> uh, and I wanted to do, I wanted to act and, and like do Broadway plays and stuff like that. I definitely did. But for me, I just knew that it would come maybe a little later doing the acting and stuff. This was like time for me to get the training, get training on the industry and acting and stuff like that. Definitely don't shy away from opportunities. But um, my pursuit with the records, it was just, it was stepping out of my comfort zone. Like I was now put in an uncomfortable position because I'd never done it. But I've listened to music my whole life and music that I listen to every day are records. So how can I now transition from something that, you know, I grew with on the stage to perform these songs that I'm listening to that are records and do it myself. So I think that was more so just the challenge in itself. Like, you know, maybe that could come later. It, I never ruled it out. Never. Like, mm -hmm. so you could poss possibly see me on a Broadway stage one day. I'm like super sporadic and adventurous like, like that. I would definitely pick up a play any day and study it and, you know, put my all into that like mm -hmm. character. But I just wanted to focus on the records. Okay. Definitely. So tell me three things that you hate doing, but you have to do. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to be completely honest. <laughs> oh, gosh. Like emails that give me anxiety. Emails give me such anxiety. Like, and it's not even that we're replying to the email because once you have to do it, it's fine. Like, for me, that's if I'm already in it, I'm in it. But the fact that I have to go through so many emails, it's like, oh. I already have to deal with emails like junk mail or like everyday mail that you have to send to for your personal life. And then now you've incorporated a whole new thing that you you ask for because I'm in people's DMs and I'm emailing, sending emails out to and stuff like that. But it definitely gives me anxiety. Like I really wish like I had, you know, a second set of hands that knew how to speak like me and write like me and respond to certain emails for business. It would truly help <laughs> Yeah. Second, not, there's not too much that I have to do that I don't really love about it. Well, maybe most of the time, like, the shopping for clothes and stuff. Like, I would rather somebody dress me, literally. Like, hey, it's this show, this location. I could give somebody, like, a vibe that I'm on. This is the set that I'm singing. You know, I really do feel like music can express definitely what you wear, your style that you bring to the table for sure. So someone just knowing like, yo, this is what she wants to look like and dressing me like, I hate having to dress myself sometimes. And then last but not least, social media. Social media is draining. Yeah, sometimes it, <laughs> it gets very overwhelming being that you feel like you almost have to give yourself to it in order to do anything or get anywhere with what you want to do in your career or even for me as a singer like I feel like I always need it like sometimes I stress myself out so social media is hard is, is still a hard one for me to like manage and not feel so like obligated to it but also like definitely keep my freedom and definitely keep my spirit to me that you know I'm not consuming myself in other people's energies other people's opinions views mindsets and like you know, social standards. So yeah, that, those are my three. <laughs> okay. So tell us what inspires you? Say what inspires me could go from people to things. Definitely. I would always say my experiences, like a lot of my freestyles that I write about, a lot of my songs are things that I've I've experienced, I've heard, I've seen happen in my life. Like my 
my first streaming song, Who Do You Know, was inspired by my dad. And just that connection that I was having to him and him transitioning and not being here, you know, physically anymore. Um, And the questions I had and what kind of, you know, spiritual and, and even religious ways and forms that I went through, you know, through that process of losing a parent, you know, the person that brought you here. But, um, yeah, just I've, I've I've definitely been inspired from experience for sure. And then people inspire me. You know, my mom inspires me. I, I definitely think my, my, how I was raised inspired me. You know, my morals and my values that I have to me comes out in how I speak, how I think, and just present myself in a song that I'm trying to, you know, get a, get across. Or, you know, saying that I could speak for a group of women who feel this way, you know, because we kind of all go through the same things. So, um, yeah, it, it ranges from people, places, things, places, places I've been, um, and even just people who speak and inspire me I, simple things like a video I could see on on Instagram could inspire me to write something um, a conversation with a friend so I have definitely different pockets of inspo heavy to light um, and I kind of mix them in and blend them you know you'll know <laughs> you'll know <laughs> so how do you know who to trust and what keeps you centered and focused I am loving your questions. Like, <laughs> you are on point. Like, Thank it's, you. It's crazy because I've really never had someone, like, really dig deep into, you know, certain topics and how you've delivered them and, and what you're asking me. So I, I love it. I love it so much. Um, you don't know who to trust. Mm. But I've gone through things, good and bad that have just shown me to just stay true to myself. If I stay true to me and I'm an honest person, my intentions are good. What I put out into the universe is clean spirited and like the truth. And it's honest, no matter what, I will see success tenfold, you know, no matter what. I've been through things where it makes me very hard to like even want to keep going because it's like, why is this so hard to get around people who want to see you grow, see you win, and don't have a cap on where that is, whether depending on where they are in their journey? That's hard to come by. So I'm, I'm learning to stick to family. Um, a lot of my new management is, is my family. Um, I'm actually trying to transition to be out in Atlanta with them on a more consistent basis so we can get some work out there done that's already, you know, in the works. So I'm excited for that. But I think that is just all a test of time. You never really know. I don't think anyone knows 100% because we don't know what the other person is thinking. Like, people can fabricate. who they can fabricate whole lives <laughs> <laughs> in relationships with someone. And it can really be the complete opposite in their heart. So um, I just think it's all a test of time to see what comes to light and, you know, who you see stands by you in the end. Um, I have learned that even through sometimes, you know, my rants and feeling hurt by some of the people you end up finding out you can't trust, you forget your support system that you do have in those moments of weakness. But I have a really strong group that... Even if it may not be, um, you know, quantity, it's quality of people. And I'm learning, you know, if I keep those type of people around, I'll be able to sort out the people I don't need to be around. And I always say God never puts me in a space that I shouldn't be in. So when I'll see certain events and and I'll, and I'll see certain things and recaps, I'm like, whoop, I know I shouldn't have been there. I'm mm-hmm. glad I wasn't there. You know, you coincidences aren't always coincidences. Sometimes they are literally fate and how things were supposed to go for you. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I just try to keep it as clean as possible. You keep things cordial. The industry is full of politics, like trust and believe. Like, but, um, you know, I just really want my team and my focus to get it. If it, if it truly means that 
you know, the only people that will ever hear my music are people that's truly dedicated to Team Noel K, then I'm super fine with that. So to piggyback off of that, one day mm-hmm. I was watching um, Love and Hip Hop and there was a girl on it who was, you know, I guess she's trying to sing or rap or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And one of the guys said to her, oh, you need to get your body done. You you got all this competition. You need to get your... And I was so appalled and yes. disgusted. I remember that. Mm-hmm. I was like, how dare him? There's nothing wrong with yeah. that girl's body. She looks good. She's small. She's petite. Yeah. Like, what the? what is wrong with her body? Right. That's her right. body. You know what I'm saying? Right. How do you feel think, about that mm-hmm. being Sorry. in the industry? No, it's okay. How do you feel about that being in the industry? And what do you tell yourself to keep yourself sane and you know, from wandering over into that lane, like, well, maybe I should, maybe, maybe if my boobs were a little bit bigger or, you you know, maybe if my waist was like a size 22, like, I don't know who Mm -hmm. the hell's (laughs) waist needs to be Mm -hmm. that small. Okay. But that's right. How do you keep yourself from even entertaining those thoughts? Um, Truthfully, I remember that scene that you're actually talking about. Um, it, it was a very, I think, really big scene. I feel like in reality TV history for me, I don't know if it feels like for anybody else, but or if it will be one day. But that was a huge thing for what I think what's going on in society now today with like the body sculpting and shaping. And, you know, don't get me wrong. Whatever you choose to do, that's what you choose to do. I don't judge anybody for what they choose to do. I just would hope everyone's safe and healthy in their choices because, you know, I've even been around and heard people who have, you know, gone under the knife and changing their body and what they look like and have passed away. Mm. And, you know, the last thing I would want is somebody to lose their life over a body image that society wants to portray as what's better looking, what's best. I think we need to promote health before we promote anything else. And that's why the conversation of image is very controversial because we feel like we almost need it. And then we're also like, no, no, we don't because really bad things happen. But pertaining to um, being a bigger girl, like, because I'm thick in all the places, the arms, the back, the butt, the thighs, the feet the face (laughs) I'm a thick girl so ain't you know and shout out to my skinny girls ain't nothing is wrong with a 22 right come as you are God accepts you as you know whatever you are and I do too I'm cool with it all um and I love my big girls like I just promote self-health and I still have things that I have to do to make sure I'm 100% healthy to say anything about any anybody or any anybody um physically like someone's body so Mm -hmm. it doesn't really affect me being in the industry I don't really have issues up front where it's like to my face I would feel like someone's making me feel small about my weight pertaining to my craft I'm accepted as a big girl but that can also be depending on the person's confidence I'm very confident so there's a there's an aura and the strength I give off in general that certain Convos or certain ways people would approach me, they wouldn't because it wouldn't even, it would go so over my head because I'm that confident in myself and I bring that to the table and anything I wear too. Like I'll put, (laughs) I'm not even like, you know, super into designers and stuff like that. And like I'm, you know, I have a fashion sense to me that my mama taught me and things like that and I had growing up, but. I'm not super, I'm just now getting even into sneakers and stuff and dressing. I told you one of the things that I hated was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dressing and having to find outfits for things because I'm super laid back with the gear. And I think my fashion sense of what I would want to look like, people feel like that doesn't match my music. People want to hear a sexy, sensual because that's the sound they're hearing. So they want to see me half naked or in something tight. And the audience I'm pertaining to may want that because I may pertain to a more mature audience. But realistically, my brand is totally not that. I'm not selling sex at all or sexiness to me. So I think in that combo, in that scene, that's what he was really trying to get at um, with her and I think we need to stop 
sexualize a woman who want to do music or want to be entertainers just because they have these nice figures and beautiful faces. We need to just accept a woman and what she's putting out there for what's coming out, not because of what she looks like. So it was a really crazy scene to watch because I'm like, what? As a black man, what? I really need, you know, it to it to um, be a little bit more balanced. And I actually had a conversation in a group of friends about this. And one of my male friends, he was really not on my side about it. He was like, this is not our responsibility because women put it out there like that. You know, you you all make a choice, too. And I'm like, I understand. And that 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 definitely plays a huge part. But. We definitely need to work together as a group, men and women, to make sure that, you know, our black women feel secure in their skin and that they don't need to go and change the way they look to be accepted yeah. for whatever they're putting out there. Exactly. I don't think it's um, like you said, people do whatever you want to do. I'm not judging. If you want to tweak something, that's your business and you have the money. Just research and make sure you go to a good doctor in a reputable place. Right. But when a man is telling you that you need to do this to compete with what's already out there, that's when I have a problem with it. I just think it's, you know, just disgusting. Like there's no other word for it for me. It changes the conversation. And then you think about little girls that are growing up. Exactly. you love so much. And it's like, what? This is what a man is going to say to them now? Right. When back in the day, it was like a woman could walk down the street and she was you know, just a beautiful black queen in her own skin. It was okay. Yeah. You know, it, in the videos, it was okay. In the media, it was okay. Like, it's changing so much, and it's scary because yeah. you're literally mutilating your body for a view, a life. Exactly. And then, uh, um, you know, I wonder if any, I wonder if most girls, do they regret these surgeries after? Because I'm sorry, a lot of them do not look good. Uh, I'm just being, yeah. A lot of just, them look very deforming. Yeah, I'm just you can get sick. You know what happened with Kay Michelle? She yeah. Look at that. She she was sick and she was honest. Like she put these things in her body when it was first the height. Because you know, every when when things first come out, they get that recall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they <had> that recall <laughs> stuff in her body, and um, it just didn't sit right. And maybe you know, even. Thinking someone about someone like Nicki Minaj who has to keep up with her body and like make sure that she's another person that got things done to her. The money, it could also be like, you know, you see one artist who's super mainstream and then you see another artist who's like, they go through the industry, you know, where it fluctuates. Whereas like, you know, you have that hit song and then it's like, you know, you create and you're doing a little, little tour here and a little tour there. And you, you're kind of just connecting with your fans where Nicki Minaj is consistently in the media all the time, all the time. She's constantly being looked for all the time, all the time. So whatever she's doing in her business and her branding, she's she has the money to keep up with her body. That's probably expensive, you know, so I don't. I just don't wish any of those things on anyone, but I'm also, you know, not in a position in a position to judge someone for what they do. I just want to promote self health and um, just a, a, a healthy form of you, you know. Well, that's and good. I'm glad confidence. to hear that. Body confidence for sure. Good. So, tell us about your music. Why R and B, and how would you describe your sound? R&B is for the soul. Like, it's just, it, it takes you there. Down to where you really have to sing out your diaphragm. That's mm-hmm. when them notes, them words, those those flows, those stories, they're coming from. They're coming from the soul. Like, and it really feeds the soul, you know, in all types of ways. Any type of mood you're in, you can find an R&B vibe that's just going to take you there. I think my sound is a little bit more universal. I, I'm I'm just in the age that I'm in of creating and a lot of the music that's modern and out, um, I'm able to switch it up a little bit with the Afro beats and stuff. I did a song, I did a cover to, um, run towns mad about it. And, you know, I'm stepping into doing reggae. I'm actually about to be co-producing and curating a, uh, soundtrack for a, um, film called Jamaica story. It's a documentary that's going to be in, film festival so 
I'm curating the soundtrack for that. And I'm super excited to be stepping into like real reggae sounds, you know, and they all connect, everything connects. And then, you know, the hip hop sounds and, you know, the, the classic old school beats, like it just makes you a more universal artist. So I, I feel like I, I have the classic R&B sound for sure, but I'm stepping into more universal lane because I'm trying house music, pop songs, and it it's really been a, a journey of exploring for me. Nice. So who would you love to work with? Oh, I got a list. Ooh. Oh, hell no, you can't do that. You can't make me just choose one person. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have one person, they said, okay, today we're going to grant person. you one wish. Who do you want to work with? That person will will be able to work with you next week. Oh, gosh. Alicia Keys. <laughs> I think I would get a two for one special with that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> right? I love her, too. I love too. Alicia Keys. For yeah. sure. I love, I love listening to her talk. Oh, yeah, her voice is mm, like, mm-hmm. what? So it's very like, oh, she's vastly, just soothing. Like, yeah, it's just so soothing. And yeah. she's an all natural woman. I love it. Um, yeah. Just her peace. Like, she just looks like she floats. So, yeah. um, for two, for one, <laughs> some piano time and, and just rifting and singing and stretching my voice with her. And, sharing experiences and and just um being an open book with her being vulnerable with her i think would do me do me good and then of course making a song for sure why not collab that'd be amazing so um do you play any instruments um no i actually don't (laughs) i'm going that's okay would you like to learn definitely stepping into a space of learning how to play the piano i think that'll be universal to trying to help me to step into other spaces of like guitar and you know other instruments that could help me along but i do i've always wanted to work with a band so Mm. stay tuned for that nice (laughs) um because there's some combos with some people in the works i'm trying to to jam out and assemble a band with some people that I used to go to high school with in LaGuardia. So I think that would be really dope if we all came together and we team no okay it out <laughs> and <laughs> tour and go around the world with live versions of my records. I would, I would love that so much. So in your career to date, what are you the most proud of? My consistency since, you know, putting out music, streaming music, videos, just put breaking out visually i think visuals are huge huge thing because like you know of course like we just were talking about image is a huge thing so when you're on camera and on screen people want to know Ooh, are you tv made like do you look like you could be a star you know you have to have that star quality to you and your look and i think ever since i decided to do that take that step to be on a visual platform and like create a visual attached to a song and like kind of make a movie or you know, put it all together I feel like I've been consistent and then I think about just my entire life being involved with doing music I don't think I've had a break since I was seven years old performing in talent shows that has always been a thing for me to be in shows or do auditions um I've tried out for the voice three times you oh, know nice. so it it I would try it out for the Lion King. Like it definitely has been a consistent road for me for something to be so for ha- having me be so sure about it. Keep going, girl. Keep going. Thank you. <laughs> what? Um, Thank you for that encouragement. I really appreciate it. No, seriously, it's a part of your journey. And one day, when you get to the place where you are there, you're going to think back and say, wow, look at all that I have done to be where I am today, because nobody has overnight success. And everybody has these stories of all of these things when they were playing little, little spots. And it was like 20 people in there. And you know what I mean? So yeah, and I I, I just truly never intend to forget that. Yeah, I think that that's that's going to be part of, I'll get to that space that you're talking about and I'm going to miss it. Yeah. Just you know, enjoy those times it. where the people just miss when you are just 
it's it was no one knew right regular enjoy this journey enjoy every you know like you said you you're watching yourself evolve by looking at you know your music today as opposed to your music a couple of years ago how it's changed how you know you you see the the growth so just enjoy every moment and keep going girl Thank you. You too. You too. Definitely. Having a podcast is not something that is easy. It takes consistency. It takes drive. And it takes really knowing how to have a conversation. And I really appreciated this conversation today. This is one of my favorite interviews. Oh, thanks. I can't wait to rave about it, okay? (laughs) I appreciate you. So what do you think is a big misconception about being in the business? Something that all uh, all your friends or people who don't really know think that they know, but they really don't. And it could just be one thing because I don't want you giving away no secrets. (laughs) 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 But just something that you're like, guys, you you know, people what people think when you say, oh, I have I have an EP coming out or I have an album. I'm working on an album or I'm going here to perform. What do you think? they think in their mind, but in reality, it ain't even like that. Definitely shows, like show days and stuff like that. And it's like people buying tickets and they're like, oh yeah, we're coming to see you. Yes, girl. People think every show you making mad money off of these, off of them seeing you and all your other friends that come to support you too. Like, no, you 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 don't make that much money. Like sometimes it's, it's who you know. Like I know a lot of people who make money off of certain things, but it's because of who they know too. Because somebody else just as good could be doing it too, and they're getting scammed. So it's like it's not always what you think. Or like just getting into places you think somebody, even in that instance, somebody plugged you in, and it's like. No, like I worked really hard to get in there. I stood outside for hours to get into this event. I wasn't on the guest list. So it's certain, it really depends because I think now more so the public knows that, you know, there are a lot of misconceptions about the industry and the glitz and the glam of life. Like I think even with it being hard, like the scrutiny with, people criticizing your music and it's like if you feel like it's a walk in the park because you put out these projects and these songs and there are a lot of people who are just consistent with what they do and it's a lot of hard work when you feel like you're getting somewhere and then you feel like you're not where you want to be and you know it just you think like or even somebody who's grammy nominated it's like you think as soon as you're grammy nominated you're rich forever it's a lot of hard work to get another Grammy nominated record as a producer or even the person on the track to get a Grammy nominated song, the artist that was on the track. So it's it, even each level to everything in this business, I think, is an eye opener that it's not necessarily a handout. And sometimes it is who you know and you need to make sure you're putting yourself in the spaces and in the right rooms to get to the people that can help you the right way and do it honestly you know don't work with people that you know do shady stuff like Mm -hmm. you want to work with people that do honest business by other people too because even if you stand up for something if you're working with somebody that doesn't it's not going to go your way yep facts so what are some other passions (laughs) that you want to explore oh i want to model like i've always loved uh, even though I don't like the dressing part, I like being on the camera once I'm dressed and I look nice, you know, I like taking the pictures, like pose me up and yeah, it's working like, like the Austin Powers movie where he's like, yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah. Working. <laughs> like, that's me. So I love it. Like I, I've always did little mini shoots with my mom and my parents. Like we always took pictures th- throughout the year for holiday cards and stuff like that. So it was always a fun thing to dress up and like take photos and go to a studio and take photos. That was really regular for me growing up. So I always wanted to model and, and just being body confident. And it was like even more of a kick-ass thriller for me. So I hope I'm sorry. Can I curse? Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> It was always kick-ass for me to just want to try it and, like, prove everybody wrong. Like, my roles are just as cute. Yes, girl. Okay? So, 
you know, that that's for me and just other women that look like me feeling like they can feel that same confidence because we're not told that we're beautiful all the time. Like we're told we're the second and the third option. We're not the first pick. So, no, you are. You are the first pick. You're your first pick. So you, you're someone else's. So absolutely. That's just, yeah, I feel I to, you can you, you can make that happen. You take beautiful pictures. I saw your pictures. Thank you. <laughs> they look very nice. Thanks. So. <laughs> I it. Thank you. What else do I want to do? Um, just oh, I have a couple of other businesses I can't really mention that I want to. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's okay. Oh, um, I just want to make sure I'm. I do want to speak them into existence, but I also want to make sure my ideas are, you know, true to me and they'll be for me and nobody else who can do them now do it before I can do it because we still kind of poor out here. <laughs> yeah, girl. kind of a broke starving artist <laughs> I know I know the pain <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, but definitely other businesses like that um, of course pursuing acting I want to direct uh, creative direct uh, films and music videos that's a passion I love making treatments even for my future videos for other artists I work with I have a video coming out soon with a friend of mine of a song we did and we have a video coming out and our creative directing. So I'm excited about that. Nice. So just little little things like that, too. Um, I look forward to doing. So what advice would you give to someone who wants to be doing what you are doing? Tell them three things that they need to do to get started and be taken seriously. And what <laughs> skill sets would you say they need to have to survive in this business? The skill set ties into the ad- the advice on where they should start. If you want to write music, if you feel like you can write music, if you feel like even if you're not at a point where you're really, really good at it, but you know your practice and take the, the proper steps to do it and be good at it, decide that first. Decide if you want to write or if you're going to go down the road where you want someone to write for you or you want to get music from people and references from people to make records because that's huge now because we don't have to write anymore and even ghostwriting in general is a business for people um writers need money to invest in a writer and you know take that choice and then you have you know more time to work on other things so decide that that comes in and if you decide to write, your skill set should be running different things. I take it to nature, which is how I grew up, but I also challenge myself in other ways. Like I've had people who have helped me in, along my journey and when I was doing business with them, direct me and helping me with my freestyles. Like they caught on to certain things like, you know how to do these covers and you, you change up your words and stuff. Keep doing them. Be consistent with them. So that's some advice that I would give there. It's like if you're gonna write make sure that you're challenging your words and your vernacular so you're using a lot of different words and you're exploring or how to put them together so you're not using some of the same phrases like even sometimes I'll get caught up like did I say this on another song because I don't want to be saying the same stuff over and over again you want to challenge and make your, your your music sound different so um yeah just figure out those two things first and Make sure you're just prepared for um, outside the outside noise and know how to work with it. Know that it can be beneficial and know when to tune it out and do you. And then come back and say, hey, outside noise, let me listen. Here, let's share and vibe and, and exchange energy. And then, okay, close it again and let me do me. Because you don't want to cast it away completely and say it doesn't matter and be, you know, super stuck up and like, no, because you're trying to appeal somewhere. (laughs) You're trying to get people to like something and see who who are those people that like it. So you do have to still appeal and be some sort of appealing and attractive there. But also no one to tune it out and still stay true to you. Like we have to stay true to our art. Like no one can tell me, that what I'm feeling inside can't pour out. It has to come from me if it's going to be by me. So anything by me has to sound like me, be like me, and be me. Even if someone else was writing it, I have to make sure that I give it my my flavor and it comes across 
in my way, my version with it in my hands. So definitely that's what I would give. That's the advice I would give. Okay. So have you ever burned a bridge you wish you could rebuild? <clears throat> no. Nice. No. No. If it was supposed to happen, it was supposed to happen. And I know what God has for me, he'll have for me. So if I'm supposed to go back and get it, if it's supposed to be for me and I'll have it again, it'll be there for me. It won't score me in the meantime. It'll stay where it needs to stay and pick up if it needs to pick up again from where it left off. But as far as like thinking, oh, well, could this have helped? No, because we can't regret things and we have to be accountable for our actions and hold ourselves to whatever lesson it was supposed to be so even if I was at fault for a bridge that I burned or a bridge that is now burned I have to take the accountability for that and learn the lesson behind my accountability for the next time if a person knows that <clears throat> my intentions were good and my accountability leads to forgiveness we can pick back up that's on them so and vice versa. So if it's on someone else and they have to be accountable, that's on me to say my forgiveness leads me to say, yeah, we can rekindle this and be what we were. And I'm going to put forth that effort. If those two things aren't actively working at the same time, it makes no sense to um, try. So I think if it's meant to be, it will be mm-hmm. always. I agree. So what does success look like for you? That's a lot. But I think that overall, um, I've moved past and I'm still getting a little bit past the billboards and the the, the charts. Like, because, you know, we hear in media, too, like people paying for, I don't know how true, allegedly you could pay for spots on billboard. You know, that's kind of hard to swallow when you want a natural and organic listing and chart of where music lands in 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 the era of music that we're in. Like, I don't want to hear that somebody bought a number one spot because if a song that should have been number one because it really sounds good, it should have been number one, not because someone bought it, you know? Even if they have the same status or the same um, accolades to, you know, match up to each other, it's not fair. You know, fair is fair, so I'm for that. But I will say that my success definitely... That is a that is something that I would like. I would like my, the masses to be able to hear me because I think it's important that what I'm trying to get across. But truthfully, overall, success looks like having the multiple streams of income that I have in the businesses that I have, uh, the storefronts that I want in the neighborhood that I need them to be in for them to be not only successful, but them to be effective to little girls like me that. I had advantages, but also I knew other little girls when I was younger didn't have those advantages. So if they don't have the fortunate parents that I had or the the, the parents that I had to get me where I am today, what, what places can they go to? What options do they have? So I need my storefronts to be in those places. So I ultimately just want my communities or communities that I'm in to just be building and me be a part of the building where I'm making the investment to see it grow. And I think that's where I can say overall my success, because that could be in music, that could be in um, the products that I'm selling, that could be in the recreational centers or health and wellness centers that I want to open up or production studios that I plan on having um, surrounding the podcast that I want to produce and things like that. So it is a number of things that I seek success in, but I think overall the outcome of where the such community outreach that I want to have, because I had it, but just guaranteeing that more people who aren't as fortunate get it, or even just were able to maintain that because I feel like social media is taking some of that interaction away. That's success for me, for sure. I like for it. Sure. So and maybe like a platinum album. You know, <laughs> maybe like right, we exactly. Can throw that in right, that album. would that's not gonna hurt yeah. nobody. Just a little platinum album. <laughs> yeah, let me just get one. Or you know how Beyonce did the gift and she dropped the whole album of herself and features. Right. And um, you know she she did that. They 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 did that. So something like like that. 
Yeah. Something like that. I totally understand. So but whatever comes. Whatever comes. And if there's extra, we'll take that too. <laughs> <laughs> so do you feel like you are living a purpose-driven life? For sure. Knowing that my purpose branches out to some of the things that I mentioned in the question you asked me previously, I definitely know that my purpose is what I'm doing is purpose driven for sure. And I wake up knowing and feeling it like I couldn't think of a day that I wouldn't sing or make more records to put out and, you know, add this to my journey and say this is the next step and just get whatever next movement is to come and invest in another part of the business that I would need to connect the dots again. Of course, every day that I wake up, I know that I'm supposed to do this. Like nothing else feels right. Nothing else ever sticks. Mm -hmm. I can do a lot of, I just, I was working at the DA's office in the Bronx and I, you know, I loved it there. They loved it. They loved me there, but just wasn't for me. You know, even all the years I studied, you know, law and, college and forensic science and stuff like that none of those things stuck because I know music is my passion but it's also my purpose okay so this is the oh hell no podcast so I'm gonna need you to share an oh hell no moment that has taught you something or changed your perspective on something and you know what an oh hell no moment is (laughs) recently I had an oh hell no moment with Doja Cat. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, some of the videos, I recently did a, a um, cover by her, too, and I'm, like, a huge, huge, huge supporter and nonetheless a fan of her music. And just some of the videos and things that I've seen that she has to now explain um, affected me in multiple ways. One, it offended me. I felt like, you know, we have to wear our blackness a certain type of way as long as we have it, you know, and your blackness is the dominant trait in anything that you're ever going to be mixed with. So you have to wear it in a certain way, even in that circumstance. You have to stand up for your blackness at all times at, at all, and always, and you can't let other people slip up, you know? So, um, being around it and condoning certain things is absolute no no and has to be checked um, at all times. So even if she feels like she wasn't a part of certain things, I do think that she allowed certain things to happen in her blackness. So that affected me because um, when I'm a fan and two, you know, you don't want to you, you want to support people and then you find out who they are. And it also brought the attention towards how we separate people from what they do and who they are. And I had an interesting conversation with my son the other day, and it's a very fine line and it's a very controversial line because some people you have to, you have to just clip them all together, even for who they are, even, even if what they do is solid, we have to. So I'm learning that and it just brought, things to the table with even how I have to conduct myself and handle myself as a public influencer and looking at myself that way along with being a musician and saying, well, hey, let's just make sure that the person um, attached to the product, attached to what they do is solid too and it balances out so nobody can like confuse the things um, or confuse the two or have to choose between the two. You know, that's hard. Um, so it, it just brought perspective on, you know, certain things that I would, I think that I would have to do moving forward, you know, because like you, like I said, as you level up new set of problems and you don't want to fall into certain lines. Now we have to explain yourself and explain your character as a person. And I can't say that I haven't dealt with those things already, um, minor things or my th- things that I felt that were minor in retrospect to what I'm speaking about with Doja Cat, but I feel like we all use utilizing social media and social chat rooms and places like that where you're being social and expressing yourself. Yes, you're, ta- you're talking as you, you're talking to you and anybody tuning in has the option, but you can offend people and you don't want to offend the people that pay and buy your stuff. 
So just the eye opener there. Girl, it's just so sad the way people are. But yeah. yeah, at least you're taking that moment and making sure you check yourself. And, you yeah. know, I like that. So it was such a pleasure having you on the show. Please tell everyone about your latest music, where they can follow you, how they can keep up with what you're doing. We want to know. Hey, T. No, okay. Thank you guys for tuning into the L Hell No podcast. I had such a great time here. Y'all know y'all can find me on all social media at Vino Okay, T H E N O E L L E K A Y. You can literally Google me, Google search me, YouTube search me, Noel K. You can find all my latest music. Streaming latest is Take You Now. Also, check out DGC. I have my part one video. <laughs> I cannot wait to drop it for you guys. It's coming soon, soon, soon. Before quarantine is over, for sure. Stay tuned. Look out for it. And check out every Wednesday. You know I'm going to drop a freestyle for y'all. And Wednesdays are going to be turning into a different type of day for the OK Wednesdays, too. So make sure y'all check that out and tune into that as well. Yes. And throughout the whole interview, I did not mention that she has a beautiful voice. People uh, listen to her music <laughs> and it's you. very nice. Yeah. So yeah. you'll enjoy her R&B flavor. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Nice days can come with a hidden cost, seasonal allergies. So the Weather Channel is using IBM Watson to predict local allergy risk up to 15 days out. Get allergy insights with Watson on the Weather Channel app and weather.com. How do I feel when my website and applications come under attack? Thanks to Newstar Security, I feel confident. Their full ultra-secure suite of always-on cloud security services means our website will always be available to our customers whenever they need it, day or night. Newstar Security does more than ensure my company's online presence is ultra-secure. It ensures my peace of mind. Newstar Security. Always-on. Ultra-secure.